one gag in the pavement Strong got fake, no doubt I'm courageous Everybody's down, gonna shout for the stages Come get down with a rock in the ages it's, it's, it's I used to be a bit kind of weary about having title because a young, lot of young people, we run from title because we yeah. think it changes us and it will change you. Mm. I am different, but I use that. I understand that my role or the title brings influence. So I use that to open doors for my young people. Yeah. I don't benefit from this title. Mm. If anything, it puts more pressure on me. The expectations are higher. Yeah. More is required from me. Mm. So actually, people have made little comments, yeah. And I think to myself, why do you think, why do you think this is all fun and games for me? Because it's really not. It's not. It's not. Um, however, I understand that, yeah, like having a title opens doors of influence and opportunity. And sometimes you have to just go with it. Yeah. Um, so am I different? To a degree, yes. Yeah. But when I'm around certain tables with bishops and people, I'm still me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm still me. Like, you will hear me say things, you'll know it's me. Because it's just how I am. And I believe that. I'm called because I am me. Yeah. And like, if I change and try and be anyone else, anyone else it's just not going to work. Like, it might work around the table with the bishops, but it's not going to work with my young people. I'm going to be fraudulent. I'm not doing that. Not into fraud. <laughs> I'm not into fraud. No fraud. No fraud. <laughs> I need to be myself. So um, it's exciting. It's tough because I have a lot on my shoulders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot. Like, um, the national role is like what, 70 churches? Yeah, it's churches. In the UK, 70 churches. And I'm one person. Yeah, one. <laughs> Lone soldier. I'm one person. <laughs> We've an amazing team um, that I've been trying to build. Um, but also there's like behind the scenes stuff that no one tells you. So when they appoint you or when you go to kind of move forward in leadership, no one tells you about that stuff. Yeah. They don't tell you about maybe some of the politics and how difficult it might be to implement things and get support about certain things and that's probably the most frustrating thing is just the things behind the scene yeah. but in terms of the role and what i get to do Chill. amazing love it so absolutely so what's, what's one thing um or where do you feel like there's a disconnect not just church god prophecy but between like churches in general and the youth why is it where do you feel the disconnect is and what do you feel the disconnect is so um say, yeah I feel like, I think there's maybe two areas that come to mind straight away. Yeah. One is that we are not necessarily relevant. Mm -hmm. So there's some churches that are getting it. They, they're getting it. They're nailing it on the head. They've got good engagement. And, but some of our churches, we're not relevant. We're not willing to talk about certain things. Mm -hmm. And if they can't talk to us about it in church, in a safe place where we can kind of influence and help them make certain decisions they're going to get that information at other places and that's where they'll be invested so if we're not giving certain information to young people in church in that safe environment and giving them also the space to be themselves yeah. we've lost them yeah, yeah, yeah. because if i can't go to my pastor or one of my leaders as a young person and talk about sex and talk about some of the issues at church um, at school or in my home then really what is church giving me outside of praise and worship and I can sing at home. Mm. So what are you giving me? I can sing at home. <laughs> so we need to be relevant and creating so that true. space. It's so true. Also, I feel like there's no, I shouldn't say no, that's extreme, but um, limited. limited leadership opportunities. So older people are holding on to those titles, holding on to their churches, holding on certain things and not letting young people come in and grow and develop the church and, and see it flourish. Mm -hmm. What worked 40 years ago does not work today. I know why those people do that as well. Why do they do it? I'm going to ask you a question. Yeah, I know why they do it. Why? Because they think they're going to have the same title in heaven. That's what happens. <laughs> they hold on to this for like 40, 50 years. And the mm. thing is, some of them are like great at what they do. Yeah. So they can adapt and change and whatever so some of them are meant to have this position but some of them just hold it because they think as soon as i see jesus mm. yeah, yeah jesus i got this title so i was the pastor at this church we had 20 people but i was pastor at this church had eight. Here's, my, had eight. here's my vip access right. into heaven title thingy yeah That's how it works. but i also think that in a more dangerous space is insecurity so I am 
you I am the senior pastor of my church. Or no, let's use let's use it as it is. I'm the national youth director. Yeah, yeah. You come along now and I see Hayden's killing. Yeah, yeah. I shouldn't be thinking, yeah, let me fine. keep him there. Mm-hmm. So actually he's no threat to me and I can still do my thing. So we both can shine. I get the greatest shine and I make sure you get the dollar shine yeah. because actually I don't want you to up to surpass me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That doesn't make you a good leader. If I, because I'm not trying to be in this role forever, yeah. okay? So let's say I've got like a, another year or two. If my leaders, the leaders that sit with me and work with me, are not doing better things than I have done, mm. I am a, a bad leader. I don't want to dull your shine. I want you to shine brighter than me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's the... I'm not holding you back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to feel like, oh, I need to step up, man. Yeah. I want to be challenged. Yeah. I am not so great that you can't teach me stuff or any of my team can't teach me. Even the young people, teach me. Yeah. It makes me greater, but we all just go on that journey. And I really feel like a lot of older leaders are not allowing young people to step up. They're doing things in school that in church they can't do. Yeah, yeah. How does that make sense? You can do a, pre- a big PowerPoint presentation on Shakespeare. Mm. You can talk, you can give me all references. You John can do Lewis bits James. and bobs. Yeah, yeah. Come to church and I ask you to recite one verse. You can't do it. Sure, I, I just, I don't think that's good. So those are the things, relevance and like training opportunities, like opportunities for them to develop themselves and the church. I don't think, that, I don't think that's there. So as you are like giving in your leadership role and you know, you've been growing and growing and growing from what I've personally seen. Now you've become national youth director for the last three, four years. There's going to be challenges with not only the youth and trying to you know, get that started, it's going to be challenging with the pastors and all these kind of things. Mm-hmm. But on a more intimate, personal level, there's going to be challenges oh God. with the <laughs> band <laughs> trying to holler. Like, hey. what's the challenges that you get, you know, with meeting guys and them not being intimidated by you holding such a position? Because guys do get intimidated by the levels. Okay. Um, so... Oh, have you not had no challenges? <laughs> I don't have to ask. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so I meet, I meet guys, because I'm a friendly person anyway. I meet guys inside church, outside of church, but they all know what I'm about. Oh, yeah. I don't hide who I am, what I am. Yeah. Like, you can be in my life if you want to, um, but it might not be in the way that you expect it to be because there's levels to this thing. However, I believe that I'm supposed to shine in people's lives regardless. So guys, cool. Um, I don't think anyone's been open enough to say they're intimidated by my role. Um, I've had comments made like, oh, you're probably too independent now. Um, They're maths. They're mad maths whatever that means yeah. um, and for me that maybe shows that you're maybe intimidated by something that I'm saying or doing yeah, yeah, yeah. but actually I have no issue with submission mm. I know people don't like that word it's like a swear word but <laughs> I have no issue with submission like it's not a problem for me but at the same time God is the head of my life yeah, yeah. so that's the person I'm submitting to now if someone comes along and can fulfill that role then we move we push when the Holy Spirit says push we push like we push but until that time i don't feel like i kind of care and that sounds so harsh if you're intimidated it means you're you're probably nah probably not the right person because i'm not gonna stop this train is moving yeah you ain't got no sauce and that's okay you can be a friend that's okay that's okay (laughs) that's okay you can be my mate so what are you looking for in those with them what am I what's looking the, for in a husband? Um, he needs to love God. Okay. Like, love God. Um, actually, he needs to, before we even go there, he needs to understand what love is because... That's a deep one, you know. I know, I'm very deep sometimes. <laughs> he needs to understand what love is because that word is so free. Mm. Like, I love Jaffa Cakes. Do you get it? But I also love God. I love my niece. And do you know what I mean? There's levels to this yeah, love word. Yeah, yeah. But if you don't understand what that means for when you're taking on a wife, then, yeah, leave that. 
So he needs to understand where that is. The Bible, like, obviously, I can I can only base it on what I believe. And the Bible says, love is patient, yeah. love is kind, all these things. If you're not showing signs of those things, I'm not sure. And I'm not saying you're going to show them all yeah. every day. You're going to be wholehearted in everything. Do you get it? But you're going to be showing them generally. And if you're not willing to kind of wait mm. um, for whatever it is, then love it, man. I'm not, I'm not interested. Like, I'm not desperate. I'm not desperate. And I just think you I need to have problems. certain standards that you just stick by. Yeah. And when people say things like, oh, are you being too picky? I'm like, so are you saying that I'm not worth my list? Mm. Am I not? Mm. I'm not worth my list then. I'm not good enough for my list. So yeah, love God, love themselves, love me, work, um, be funny and tall, dark and handsome. How can you feel that in the end? <laughs> How can you feel that in the end? Because, because you have to be realistic. Looks matter to me. It looks matter. So I can't be going on like, oh, if I see someone who has all of the above yeah. and isn't attractive, it's cool. Got it. Because I'm not going to say that. Because that would be a lie. And the Bible says, you know. Well, you might go to you that like, love is blind kind of thing. Whoa. Um, you get me? Like, yeah, I get that. But... Still well, that's messy. not what we're doing in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm. I will be honest. Funny, tall, like, and handsome are the things outside of like the more serious things. Okay. So, is there anything you change about your journey as a since you've been as you've been single as a Christian? Is there anything? You can um. Change? Yeah. I wouldn't let people make me feel like I'm less valuable because I'm single. Okay. So, like, when I had my first appointment. Mm. Um, I remember being on the stage, and what they do in Bethel, they call up all the appointees. You go up and you go up with your partner, partner mm. or yourself. I went up with the Lord, okay? So I was on the stage, and I remember this lady said to me, Oh, maybe next time you'll be okay with your husband. Relax, Pastor, whoever you are. Like that, <laughs> that was literally 10 seconds after moving into my next chapter. Someone said that, and I'm not gonna lie. Like when so we had to leave the stage to get prayed for, and I remember gr- my dad was there, and my mum was working. I think she had my niece. Mm. I grabbed onto my dad because in that moment I felt so insecure. Really? I listen. I was like, Dad, I held onto him the whole way. Come on, Dad, because I just felt like, wow, is that how people view me? Like I can't do what I'm called to do because I don't have a husband. That's crazy. And that that was something I had to get over. And it took a while because it just, I don't know, it just resonated. And I think because, like, I'm getting older, there is that expectation that, you know, maybe you should, you know, get another age. Maybe you should be with someone. Mm. Um, but it doesn't take away from my value. And I think if I'd have clocked that earlier, I wouldn't have let certain things, like, rest in me. Right, yeah. um, I would have been like, I probably would have said to her, no, I'm, I'm, I'm right. I probably would have had a response. Yeah, Something maybe a bit cheeky, ready, ready. but I'd have been like, are you right? I'm fine. Do you, like, like, Do you get me? God called <laughs> me and whoever God calls to be my partner, if that ever happens, mm. like we'll have their own thing and we'll support each other and we will shine. Simple. So what's the hardest thing you've had to deal with as a Christian in general? Mm-hmm. And how did you overcome that? I think... The hardest thing I had to overcome, I'm going to do this without tears. As a Christian. As a Christian, we're going to do this without tears, okay? Um, Was facing, um, so I suffered abuse when I was younger. Mm. And people that have heard me preach and stuff will are not like, will know all of this stuff. Mm. Because I'm very open about it now. Um, Going through that process of having to admit that it happened. Yeah. Tell my parents, mm. confront my abuser, heal, mm. and still kind of be okay. Because through most of that stuff, I was still, I wasn't necessarily preaching and teaching at the time, but I was still very active. I was still doing bits. Mm-hmm. Um, at the time I was in New Year, so I was singing a lot. Um, and that, even that really helped me even to heal, just to be mentally sane. Um, but that was so difficult because for me, I remember being in my bed and saying, God, why, if you see everything mm. and know everything mm. and understand everything, why have you allowed that to happen to me? Mm. 
when I was a child, I didn't know. It's not like I got myself in certain situations. I didn't understand what was really going on. Yeah. And that was tough mm. because I'm like, you're a loving God. But I didn't understand about free will. I didn't understand all of that at the time. And I remember um, kind of getting a bit of support with certain people that have been through similar things and then breaking it down to me. And I remember kind of feeling peace about the fact that people have free choice. God never wanted that to happen to me. And I think that's what I got misconstrued, right, yeah. is that I was kind of like, right, you love me, but you let that happen to me. How does that work? And there was a sense of God being like, I loved you then, I love you now, and I will always love you. Mm. I didn't want that to happen to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But everyone has free choice. And unfortunately, that person chose what they chose. However, I will heal you completely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. What's one thing that you can... I'm, I don't, I'm all right. You sure? Yeah, yeah. And I think, just to tell that off, yeah. I cry because I'm grateful. Mm. Some people, um, like, some people turn crazy with that stuff. Yeah, it's real. Some people, it affects how they see themselves, how they see God, how they see men. And that hasn't happened to me. Mm. And so I'm grateful. I'm grateful that I can share my story. I know that it's helped people and like, I'm still here. Like, I'm not, I'm not, but in a good way. Um, and I'm still standing. I have hope that one day, whether I meet someone or not, I'm still going to shine. I'm still called to do stuff. So, yeah, I, I cry because I remember that journey and how amazing God has been to carry me through that and that he's been faithful through the whole thing. So, yeah, you said without tears, but he. <laughs> okay. So what is, oh, before we go on to that, mm -hmm. I think it's very, people will be grateful for you being so open about what you've gone through. Because mm -hmm. um, what tends to happen in church is we don't talk about these things mm -hmm. and everyone's just expected to just be okay in whatever situation they've had, they've dealt with. Um, and we also don't heal in the time we need to. Mm -hmm. we, we kind of have to rush the healing process in a lot of these situations. Um, so I want to thank you for just like expressing yourself and just allowing people to see that part of you. Mm -hmm. So I just want to say that before we move on to the next question. Um, what would you say at this point in your life is hindering you from getting closer to God? If you could pinpoint it to mm -hmm. one thing. Me? It's me, like, it's the battle between, I'm 21, 21, you know, I'm definitely not 21, I'm 29, and I want to go and live, don't laugh, I'm definitely not 21, okay? 21 plus 9, I'm going to be 30, and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's my last year of my 20s, I just want to live life and go ham and do what everyone else is doing, and I know that I can't. That's tough. Mm. Like, it's me, it's me battling with, do I try to always choose what's right? Mm. Or do I just, mm, you know, take the back route? Do I just, you know? And that is a, that's a battle because it would be easy for me to do that. And there have been times when I've done that. But on a whole, I'm quite strong. I feel like I've been through so much stuff that it's not easy for someone to push me off that road, like that's not gonna happen. It's me and the things that I'm facing, the things that I'm battling that probably prevent me from pushing because for example, if I know that I should go and study, but there's something else on, there's a gig or there's certain, I'm probably gonna go to the gig because I love music, I wanna be out and enjoy myself. I wanna have that balance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I'd say it was me. Okay. So how do you, What's the plan to overcome that then? If you know it's you, yeah. how do you plan to overcome it? Because obviously for some other people mm -hmm. who will be watching this, it's them as well. Right. The, the My plan, how I work things, I'm, quite, I'm accountable to people. Mm. So there's certain people like yourself, one of our other cousins, my two best friends that pretty much know everything. Like 
stuff doesn't go down and there's no one that knows. Yeah. And that, although it's hard because sometimes you'll say a thing and then when it changes, you're like, oh man, I already told everybody, but I have to be accountable. Mm. That's what gets me through is the fact that there's someone that always knows where I am, what I'm doing. And it's not because um, I'm a child and I need parenting. It's because I know what I've signed up for, the lifestyle I've signed up for. Mm. And until, you know, a day changes when I maybe have a husband or whatever, I have people that I trust, mm. that I'm safe with to share that with. Yeah. So accountability is important because secrets and stuff that's done in the dark, that's what wrecks people. It does. It always feels better when something's off your chest. Mm. People say, oh, I feel so much better. It's because things are not meant to be hidden. Things are not meant to be secret. And everyone has those things that they don't want to share. But there's certain things that if you know it's stopping you from being close to God, you need to share it. Mm. So that it can be, you know, people can pray for you and support you in different ways. But you have to be honest. So there's a lot of people who look up to you, and especially after watching this, will be like, I want to know more about it, I want to see it, I want to like have her at my event or speak or preach or whatever it is uh, or just have a conversation with her um, to let stuff come off their chest mm -hmm. um, and there's going to be people who are going through this Christian journey who will be struggling at this moment in time like what encouragement <laughs> would you give to not just people who are going through a Christian journey but mm -hmm. people who will watch this and think what's keeping her so sane? Mm -hmm. what encouragement would you give to those people? My encouragement would be that God is not so far from you that he's not with you. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we view God as like being up there, yeah, yeah. this booming voice. Actually, God is very much there. And whatever you're going through, whatever you're struggling with, whatever is hurting, there's no pain that God can't heal. There's no situation that God can't fix. And my encouragement is that just try try asking god try asking and actually believing that god has the answer because it's when you do that it gets dangerous yeah, yeah. because god starts answering and you're like oh man now i've got to kind of you know and i want people to kind of remember that this is a journey like any journey sometimes you take the wrong turn you take five wrong turns you go around that roundabout too fast you have a crash you know, you're off the road for a bit, you get a new car, the journey begins. Do you know what I mean? Like you take a break, you're speeding, you will get to your destination, you'll get to the place you need to be. We have to trust God. Mm. And when you are weak, when you feel like you can't do it, in our weakness, I said it before, mm. God's strength is made perfect. So you never really lose. Yeah. So when you're strong, God is still strong. And when you're weak, God is still strong. It's win-win really. So yeah, I would say try God trust him um, and know that the journey is never never high it's never just highs it's not how it works but actually even in your lowest points God is with you and he loves you okay that's good that is hopefully that encourages someone else. I hope so I, I, I know it will I know it will hope so. so what's your plans for 2020 <sighs> I'm turning 30 Jeez. in May so um, that's like exciting I have lots to do. So I'm um, tour managing, mm -hmm. I'm preaching, I'm teaching, I'm hosting a little bit, um, planning a youth retreat, yeah. national youth retreat, so please guys. Um, and just, I'm working, yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. <laughs> Go about my job. I do that, I have a nine to five and a five to nine. And so you're working and my goal for the year is honestly, it sounds so like hippie-ish, but it's to just be at peace with everything that I do. That's the motive. Everything else, like you can make plans and, and it doesn't happen. But actually when you have peace and I understand that my life is planned out by God, I have plans, yes, but actually the Lord guides everything that I do. And so I have certain things that I know I'm doing, but I just want to enjoy my life and be at peace with the things that I'm doing. Um, so it sounds really loose, but I'm... That's what I'm like. Yeah, yeah, that's how I feel. That is the motive to get to the end of the year thinking, yeah, there was highs and lows, but actually in that I saw God's hand and I was at peace with decisions I made, mm -hmm. things that I said, yeah. um, how I deal with people, how I deal with myself, mm -hmm. all of that, and just to, just to win. Last question. What encouragement would you give to yourself? 
with where you're at in life right now? I would encourage myself not to always put so much pressure on myself. Um, to step back when it's necessary mm. and go again. I'd encourage myself that I'm doing good. I'm doing, I'm doing good, I'm doing well. Um, and that even when I'm not, there's people around that will help me be good again. Mm. So I win, I'm a winner. Like Aston Villa. Aston Villa winners at the moment. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. <laughs> 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 With Miss Leanne Jacobs. Thank you. Hey, you're welcome.